Hello everyone this is part 28 of what if Naruto was banished and becomes master swordsman, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. 32 years ago 12 miles north of Rain, Onke Sato, or Grace Village as it was known, existed on the border of Kusa and Am. Grace was a peaceful village by many standards. The citizens of Grace were simple farmers and trade merchants. Hiyaka Muzan, was a simple farmer in his mid-thirties married to Hiyaka Ashitaba, who ran a local shop and had three lovely kids. A six-year-old boy Eizu, five-year-old girl Samui, and another boy named Rike, who was three years old. The family house was relatively small. The children shared a room while the parents had their own room. Grace was not an economically prosperous village by any stretch of the imagination. Most of the citizens belonged to villages in rain and grass that were destroyed by the Shinobi War. It was a town full of refugees with the hopes of living peacefully, well as peaceful as they could in a time of war. It was a nice day outside and Muzan had just finished planting some seeds. Heading toward his house he saw Eizu, Samui, and Rike playing in a field. He smiled at seeing his kids play. Eizu ran toward his father with his siblings trailing. Father, father, Eizu yelled out. Yes Eizu, father you said you was going to take us into town to get some sweets. Can you please take us? Muzan looked as all three who gave him the puppy dog eyes. I would but your mother probably would. Would say that's a great idea. In fact, let go out to eat as a family. Ashitaba suggested. Azu pumped and the other kids pumped their fist in success. The happy family headed into town to get something to eat. While in town at a local restaurant the family was enjoying their meal. You know Azu school will be starting soon. You and Samui will be taking classes. Mom why do have to go to school? School is boring. Azu complained. Azu Nisan is right. School is boring. I want to travel the world. Kasan, have you two seen traveled the world? Samui asked. A sad look appeared in Muzan's eyes, Samui-chan, this world is a dangerous place. The times we are in aren't safe to travel. I hope by the time you become of age you can see the world without having to worry about seeing the ugly things that your mother and I had to see. Like what Tucson? Azu asked. Death, famine, disease is widespread because of this shinobi war. People live in fear. They fear leaving their homes and their families because they are afraid it will be the last time they see their loved ones. Why do these ninja even fight? What is the point? Muzan questioned. I don't know honey, but everyone has their reasons for doing what they do. I'm just glad that we are here together. Ashitaba's smile faded when she saw a group of rain shinobi entered the establishment. Rain shinobi were known to be ruthless and had a reputation for causing trouble. Both her and her husband nodded in agreement that it was time to leave. Come kids, let's get home so you guys can get ready for tomorrow. Azu and his siblings got up and Muzan escorted them out. Ashitaba was on her way out but one of the rain shinobi grabbed her arm, hey there pretty lady, want to have a good time. I'm married, she said gently pulling her arm away from the shinobi. He forcefully grabbed her, don't you turn away from me. Please stop, my children. She pleaded with the man. Muzan's attention was on the kids so he didn't see what was going on. Azu, however did see what was going. Running back into the restaurant he yelled, leave my mother alone. One of the rain shinobi tripped the boy, shut up punk. We do we want you bastard. Ain't that right, Hanzu Sama. Azu looked up to Shea a man with a snorkel on his face. The man had a menacing look. Muzan entered with his other kids behind him, leave them alone. Hanzu's eyes moved from the boy to Muzan. He looked at the shinobi under his command who had Ashitaba pinned down, release her. Sit down and act civilized and just eat a nice meal. You're scaring everyone. The shinobi apologized quickly, sorry Hanzu-sama. Apologize to the lady and her family, Hanzu said. Sorry for the trouble I've caused you. The guy said to Ashitaba who immediately ran over to Azu. Hanzu looked at Muzan who rushed to his family, you should get your family out of here. Muzan nodded quickly rushed them out of there. It took them only minutes to get home. Muzan was furious, why are they here? Shinobi are a plague on this world. 
They bring nothing but death and destruction wherever they go. They all think they rule the world. Not all shinobi are bad muzzin and you know that. If it wasn't for that blonde female medic from Kanoa, I forget her name Swain, Sukiwait, man I feel bad for not remembering. I would have lost you to that poison you contracted five years ago. Ashitaba stated. She's the exception, Muzan had nothing else to say, which is why he walked away. Ashitaba went to follow him but stopped when Azu tugged her pant leg, Ka-san, father almost died. Azu asked. Yes, you were a year old and we were living in a village few miles from here. Grass Shinobi invaded the village. Everyone was sorted except us. Your father, in his attempt to protect me and you was injured with Senban laced with poison. We were all going to die but that female shinobi from Kanoa showed up with a white-haired man and guy who had pale skin and eyes like a snake. They saved us, but she is the one who saved your father. If all shinobi were bad we would be dead, but that girl and her team showed me that not all shinobi are bad. Azu understood. He didn't hate shinobi, he really didn't hate anyone. For him it was something he really had no clue about. Aisu's mother touched his shoulder and smiled, some shinobi fight for a better world. Some fight for peace Aizu. Someday this war will end and we will have the peace that we seek. Whatever you do in life Aizu, and this goes for you too Samui and Raike, make sure you do something that helps others. Quote. Okay, time to go to bed kids. Ashitaba gathered all of the kids and led them to their rooms. Tucking the kids into their beds, the blue-eyed brunette sat next to Aizu. You know that was brave of you today Aizu-chan but don't ever do something like that again. Those guys could have killed you. Carson, I just wanted to protect you that's all. I don't want anyone to hurt you. Samui, even though I don't like her very much, and Raike. She laughed, that's just your sibling rivalry. But I'm glad you want to protect us but it's my job to protect you. K him on the forehead, good night Aizu-chan. Good night Carson, Aizu said as he turned around to go to sleep. Little did he know he wouldn't be getting much sleep that night. Two hours later, Muzan burst into his kid's room causing them to jump up. Father what's going on? Aizu asked a little groggy. Those damn shinobi are burning the village to the ground. Let's go we're leaving now. Hurry and get dressed. The kids hurried to get their clothes on. Rushing out of the house as soon as everyone was ready, Aizu watched as flames were all over the village. Come, we have to hurry, Aizu watched as two kunai pierced his father's heart. Ashitaba screamed when Muzan fell dead. One of the rain shinobi who was standing on top of the house looked down at Ashitaba with a wicked smile, now that we took care of him, he shunshined behind the woman and wrapped her arms around her. Licking her neck, taste good lady. Aizu immediately went after the guy, leave my mom alone. The young boy was cut off by Hanzu, you have heart kid but you're in the way. With a swift punch to the face, Aizu was sent flying. Samui who was crying along with Raike ran toward Aizu. Aizu Nisan. I have to protect Carson, Samui and Rike from the bad men. Aizu would never get the chance. A shinobi in his mid-teens appeared behind the kids. With a swift slash of his sword they were sliced in half. Aizu eyes widened as tears slowly ran down his cheek. Turning to him, the shinobi gave a sadistic smile. Aizu couldn't move his body. He realized that he was more injured than he thought. He could do nothing as the shinobi forced his mother back into the house. Ka, San, was his last thought before his head went limp. Nine hours later, a nightmare, nothing more than a nightmare is what the boy thought. Feeling water droplets on his face and a slight tap from a hand, he heard the man say, he's alive. Man, this kid survived an attack by Salamander Hanzu, he truly is lucky. He heard another voice say, true, but his family wasn't. Did you see the mutilated corpse of the women in the house? Those words caused Aizu eyes to come to life. Jumping up and ignoring the pain that he was in, he ran to the house, shooting past the four cloud shinobi to see his mother. When he arrived he saw her end mutilated body on the floor. Carson. Closing his eyes and bawling his fist, tears were streaming down the young boy's face. It hurts doesn't it kid? I'm going to make them all pay for this. Aizu said. How do you plan to do that? The female of the squad asked. I don't know, but they will all pay. Aizu said to the red-haired cloud nin. Hmm, you seem determined to reach that goal. Do you want to train to become a shinobi kid? The cloud shinobi asked. A shinobi. Aizu thought about it for a second. 
Yes a shinobi. Without training you will never be able to stand against the man responsible for this. Kid you can stay here and die or come with us and become a shinobi of cloud, what do you say? Can you help me bury my family first? The shinobi from cloud nodded. Sure kid, what's your name? Hiyaka Azu, and you are. Azu asked the man. Sako Tosku. Pleased to meet you Azu. Now let's give your family a proper burial. Tosku motioned for his teammates to pick up Ashitaba's body to give her, along with the others, a proper burial. One hour later, Azu was standing on the graves of his parents and siblings. I failed you all. I couldn't save you guys. I promise I won't fail again. Father you hate Shinobi, but I will become one that will change the world. Carson, I will bring forth that peace you seek. Samui and Raike, I miss you two so much. I was a bad big brother but I will not fail. On your graves I will end war and I will kill Salamander Hanzu. Turning to Tosku, I'm ready to go sir. Follow me child. I will turn you into a great shinobi. Come, we're off. Azu followed as the cloud group walked off. Five years later, walking down a street in cloud, and 13-year Azu was proud of his accomplishment. He was now a chunin. Training under the legendary, Red Lightning, he was looked at as the second coming. Graduating at the top of his class four years prior, the preteen couldn't have been more proud. He was paired with up with his best friend Eugen and a girl named Aoki, whom he also saw as best friend, more like siblings. Heading towards his team's location, he wasn't meeting up with his team. Arriving at the location, he saw Eugen, Aoki, and their Junin sensei, Tosku waiting for him. So what's our mission today sensei? Azu asked. Today we will be venturing off into rain country. Tosku stated. Azu look became grim. Sensei, do you mind if I? Depends on how much time we have after the mission. We will invade one of the shinobi hideouts in rain and eliminate all enemy nins. Our team has become effective with this type of missions, which is why the rakage has selected us. The red-haired shinobi stated. Azu, who was in the standard cloud chunin, junin uniform, put his head down. He was feeling a mixed number of emotions. Azu hated the rain shinobi with a passion. Well not all rain shinobi, just Hanzu. He was getting closer to his goal and knew that one day he was going to be the one to end that man's life. He was a cloud shinobi and he couldn't let this bother him. He had a mission that he needed to complete. Looking up at his squad, let's go, we have job to do. Tosku smiled, squad red move out. The group disappeared in a blur. Two days later, Azu and his group entered rain country. The rain that seems to be ever present was exactly why it was named rain. Getting to the base would be easy enough. Squad Red was known for their efficiency when it came to missions. The group was slowly approaching the base in rain. The blue-eyed Chunin slowly pulled out his kunai as he and his team stood in front of the entrance. With Azu on the right and an Eugen on the left, the squad was in formation. The two needed confirmation from their sensei and Aoki who was in the back of the compound. I'm in position. I'm in position as well. Azu replied. I'm in position as well, how about you sensei? The lack of a response in Eugen's communicator confirmed that their sensei was in position. Azu rolled a ball inside of the compound. Upon exploding or causing a cloud of smoke, he kicked the door open and was the first to enter the compound followed by Eugen. What the hell is going? Ugh, was the last sound that escaped the shinobi's mouth as Azu slit his throat with the kunai in his hand. Eugen slay two rain nins with the senbon he threw into their neck. The two shinobi were operating on sound alone and were eliminating their targets with the greatest of ease. Both were now back to back. Azu spoke into his communication device, front secure. Rear secure, Aoki said in Aisu's air. I have the package, let's move out. Hearing their sensei, the group was gone from their locations in an instant. Eleven shinobi lay dead in the one-story base. With their assignment complete, the group was heading back to Cloud. Azu, however wanted to take a detour. I will meet you guys back in Cloud, I have some business that I need to take care of. Wait Azu, I will go with you. Eugen said. No, this is something that he must do by himself. Tosku informed the boy. Azu, you have a week. You know Cloud has strict policies about leaving the country while not conducting a mission. Don't worry Sensei, I will be back before then. Later guys. Azu separated himself from the group and headed toward Grace Village, he headed towards home. 
Two and a half hours later, Azu was walking in the burned down village of Grace. The desolated area reminded him of that day his family was ripped from him. A gust wind blew causing his cheek length hair to cover his eyes. I'm home. His feet started to move. Walking through Grace, which was now a ghost town, helped him reinforce his goal of ending war and stopping Hanzu and Shinobi like him. It didn't take him long to reach his house, which was fallen apart due to being abandoned for years. Looking to his right, he saw the graves he created for his family. Slowly approaching the graves, he stopped in front of them. Examining each grave, he closed his eyes. It's been a long time. I'm sorry that I couldn't visit you guys sooner but my shinobi training has caused me to be neglectful. I've come a long way and I'm no longer a helpless child. I only wish I had the skills I have now back then, I could have saved you all. Father, I know you don't like shinobi but the cloud village is a good village. I fight to ensure that peace is kept throughout the region. I'm only a mid-level shinobi but I will be promoted to Junin in no time. I have friends now, Yujin and Aoki, whom I consider my brothers and sister. Smiling, he turned to his mother's headstone, Choku is like a father to me and his wife Misha, is like a mother. I guess you can say I have found my second family. Rest assured that they have not and will never replace you guys. I will never forget any of you. To honor your legacy I will be sure to exact justice on your killers. Niuobai Dobu, Yokobari Hausui, Senu Ryu, Rakusa Mizuni, and Salamander Hanzo. I will kill them all with my own hands. Till we meet again, goodbye everyone. Turning away, the young Chunin walked away from his family and never looked back. He would head to back to Cloud, or at least that's what he had intended to do until he saw his sensei's messenger bird. What's going on now? Taking the message from the bird, the boy read the note, so we have been assigned a mission to fire country this quick. Most be something important. Exiting the village, the cloud nin head toward fire country to meet up with his squad. One day later, Azu finally caught up with his squad at the rendezvous point. Hey guys, can someone brief me? On our way back to cloud, we ran into squadron alpha who needed our aid in fire country. A few missed shinobi in this region have captured some of our comrades and we wish to retrieve them before they wind up in water country. Squad Red Strike, we will lend our support. Azu, you will be going with Misora, Hana, and Sodai. Gizu, you will be accompanying me, Yujin and Aoki. Let's head out. When we have information on the location, let regroup and plan our counter-strike. Move out. Everyone nodded. Azu moved out with the squad he was assigned to. He was glad to be in Hannah's squad. The female with long flowing silky black hair and grey eyes captivated the young Chunin. The crush was a mutual feeling as the girl cheeks turned red when he glanced at her. Let's do our best Hannah chan Sure Azu kun Sodai narrowed his eyes at Azu. He didn't like him at all. 1. He received so much praise from all of the older shinobi and 2. Hannah liked him. This guy was stealing his thunder. He wouldn't worry about that now. They had a mission that they needed to complete and that came first. He would take up issues with the golden boy another day. After an hour or so miss or a motion for the group to stop. It seems we have appeared. Our goal here is to subdue the enemy. We will need to extract information out of them and save our comrades at the same time. Azu spoke, Miss Aura Sensei, I recommend that we stay here and send a messenger hawk to the others. This way we will not lose the enemy if they decide to move. That's stupid Azu. The enemy will see the hawk and know it's from us. There is no way it will work. Sure it will. But it really doesn't need to be a hawk. Sensei, could you use one of your summons and have them locate Tosku and the others? Misora smiled at the boy. Sure. Summoning a squirrel, he looked at the squirrel. Find Choku and inform him of our location. If we move follow the trail. The squirrel was off. Misora turned to Azu. good move Azu. I see why Tosku praises you highly. Sodai just frowned at his sensei's acknowledgement of Azu. Hana looked at Azu. that was very smart of you Azu kun Thanks Hana-chan, but we still have to save our comrades. It took only about five minutes before Tosku and the others landed next to Azu. So, you guys found them. What's our next move? Azu spoke, there are six shinobi patrolling the grounds. It's hard to deduce how many are in the hut, but I would say since three of our comrades are captured, I would say there are four in the tent with them. So what course of action should we take? 
Cho Ku asked the boy. Well if it was just us, I would recommend that Eugen and you get close to the compound while me and Aoki provide support from a distance. Aizu stated. How would that work? You guys would be sorted. Sod I couldn't believe that everyone hailed this kid as the next coming of, Red Lightning. He was an idiot and he was going to prove that to everyone, especially Hannah. Simple. Eugen is a master at silent killing. With him entering through the back and taking down the shinobi before they know what hit them, would have given us the tactical advantage. Sensei would have provided support to Yujin in case the enemies were more skilled. If that fell apart and they were discovered, the shinobi wouldn't see them as much of a threat since it was only two. That's where Aoki and I come in. Staying back and striking at the right time, we would have eliminated the threat in the most effective and efficient manner. That would have worked if it was just 10 to 13 shinobi down there however. Aizu closed his eyes and smiled. However what? However, there are more shinobi and we are completely surrounded. Sodai didn't believe Aizu until the entire enemy shinobi squad surrounded them completely. Look like a bunch of cloud shinobi trying to save their friends. What a pity. Let's kill them. One of the missed shinobi nodded. Preparing to shield themselves for the attack, they were ready to defend their lives. However, the 12 shinobi that surrounded the group found that they couldn't move. Looking at their feet they noticed that Wire was holding them in place. Aizu turned in mud causing everyone to be surprised. Senban needles were implanted into the neck of each shinobi, causing them to fall to the ground. Misora smiled, good job Aizu. Your bunshin worked and you had time to warn the others to stay back. Excellent deduction. You mean that I was talking to a clone? Sodai said in anger. Sorry Sodai-san, the real Azu and the rest of team, Red Strike, appeared. But I noticed that we were surrounded the moment we landed. I made a clone during the summon. The smoke allowed me the window I needed to warn the others. Surprise is a key element in a shinobi's arsenal. But even more, we now have the advantage over the enemy. They gave it to us the moment they played this hand. What advantage do you mean Aizu-kun? Hannah asked. We can transform ourselves in these shinobi and infiltrate the base. This will allow us to get close to our comrades without doing battle unnecessarily. Come let's go everyone. The group selected a shinobi to transform into from the defeated rain shinobi. The transformed group entered the base and greeted their fake comrades. Aizu motioned for Sodai and Hannah to head to the tent with him. Approaching the tent, Aizu spoke, we've come to relieve you guys of your duty. You guys are early, but I will not stop you if you want to take over early. Don't mention it, they're preparing some food out there you guys should go and get some. The shinobi rushed outside only to be welcomed to a haze of smoke that caused them to fall to the ground. Aizu transformed back into himself, check for any major injuries. If we don't find any grab someone and move out. Following Aizu the group did as they were told. Finding no injuries of significance, Aizu and the other moved out. The others caught up immediately. All right everyone let's head back home. Choku stated as he had an enemy nin draped over his shoulder. The group came to a stop when Aizu stopped. Looking around he frowned, was surround again. Sodai pulled out a kunai, looks like we're fighting our way out of this. Slipped into a fighting stance. Aoki did the same as well. Yujin had a handful of Senban needles in his hand ready for attack. The group however was surprised, to see a number of cloud shinobi emerge from the trees. What's going on? The young Aizu asked. The Junin qualification exams and Aizu, you passed with flying colors. Aizu turned to his sensei. You mean, this nothing more than a test for us? Aizu asked. Misora, yes. I must say you did excellent kid. You were Junin material without question. The rest of you did well but unfortunately I didn't see anything that screamed Junin. Don't get down, you all will be tested when you least expect it. Come on let's head home. A number of shinobi from Cloud walked up and congratulated Aizu on his accomplishment. What's the big deal, we helped as well. Sodai said with resentment. Yay but the majority of it was Aizu's plan. That's my best friend for you, always knows what to do in a pinch. Grabbing Sodai in friendly manner, let's head back. Everyone took off back home to Cloud. Four years passed. Seventeen years of age and Aizu was more than an accomplished shinobi of Cloud. He had everything anyone could want. He had respect, friends, and everything shinobi in his position could want. Yujin, Aoki, Sodai, 
Izu, and Hana were all Junins now. It was a sunny day and Aizu was sitting on top of a building in cloud. His sensei and Misora were now the parents of a beautiful girl named Kumoko. A lot has happened in the past four years. He became a Junin, the cloud sealing the five tail within Nenshukuan, the child of the Sandaim Rakage, Nenshu Keisei. It was actually Nenshu who sealed the demon within his son after the demon attacked Cloud. Kuan wondered what would cause the attack but really didn't have time to worry about it. The boy was hated by most of the villagers but Aizu didn't hate the child. How could he hate someone who had no control over his fate? He did however feel sorry for the boy. His own parents treats him with hate and discontent. But his power will protect our village seeing that mist sealed the Hachi no Orochi inside a girl one year ago. All of this preparation and building ultimate weapons, I really have to do something that will stop this. These wars seem to have no end in sight and I'm not strong enough to do anything that will end it myself. But I will be soon enough. Aizu was broken from his thoughts when soft arms wrapped around him. He smiled knowing it was his beautiful Hannah. Hannah-chan, how are you? Good. I hear you have a solo mission near Grass Country. Are you going to visit your family while there? She asked. I can't stand before them until I achieve my goals Hannah-chan. I still need to get stronger. You know I've been reading and I stumble upon the four swords of legend. These swords have been believed to be used to usher in an era of peace in the world. One of the legendary Sanan, Orokimaru, wields Kusanagi. Heaven's Blade is wielded by members of the Manashu clan and its current wielder is a guy named Manashu Raiho. He is considered to be the strongest warrior in the world. Which begs the question why doesn't he help end the war? In any event, the two other swords, Dragon's Fang, and, Phoenix Claw, are swords part of the mythical contracts. My mission is one that I requested Hannah Chan. For the last year or so I've been studying about these contracts trying to find the location. I still don't know the location either, but I do have leads on the dragon's lair. I promise I will find it and come back stronger. Aizu said with confidence. You better come back to me. Aizu-chan, I love the fact that you want to bring peace in the world. This world needs more people like you. I'm sure parents are proud. You should get going Aizu-chan. Come back ten times stronger okay. Hannah K him on the cheek, I love you, and then left him to himself. I love you too Hannah. I promise I will come back stronger. Said as she walked away. Aizu looked up in the sky, I will find the dragon's lair. Three days later, Aizu, who was dressed in the typical Junan outfit, minus the vest, was lost. He knew that he was in enemy territory but it didn't matter, he was an accomplished shinobi who could defend himself. This seems hopeless. According to my research, it said that the lair was near Takuchi. But if that's true then, suddenly Aizu realized something. Pulling out the map he looked at it again, that's right. Takuchi advanced their civilization and spread it into, he now realized where he was at, in fire country. I'm in fire country. I have to be careful, Kanoa Shinobi are strong. I can't think about that, I have to find that lair. Aizu continued on his trek to find the lair. Five days later, Aizu, who was still searching for the lair was getting low on supplies, this, it's nothing more than a myth. No, it has to be true. I didn't waste all of this time combing this mound range for nothing. Kicking a rock, Aizu fell at least six stories into the mountain. Hitting the ground with a loud thud, the young Junin was even more pissed. The anger soon faded when he looked around to see lamps decorate the hallway that had dragon carvings. A noise caught his attention. When he looked up, he saw the hole that he fell from close. Standing up he finally realized where he was at. I made it. It didn't take him long to figure out what direction he needed to go. Walking towards the two big golden doors with the dueling dragons, Aizu took a deep breath before pushing the door open. Upon entering the room, the doors closed behind him immediately. He also noticed the hundreds of human bones that decorated the floor. Looking straight ahead he saw a large lake of black fire. He didn't have time to be amazed, fire shot from the lake and multiple dragons emerged. Flying all over the large room and circling him, the dragons started to talk, looks like we have another victim. So it would seem another weakling. Shall we kill him and get it over with now? He might be the one. Sorrows will decide that. Aizu was slightly scared, but he remembered his resolve and all of his fear instantly dissolved. Please, 
I need to know how I can obtain the contract of the dragons. Whatever test I have to endure I will. Why? Want power to kill. Want power to rule. Our power is only for the strong not the weak. We should tear you apart right now. Let's do it. Kill him. The dragons surround Azu. Opening their mouths he could see a glow coming from the insides. He didn't know what to expect but he knew it wouldn't be good. However, he heard a commanding voice, you will do such thing, not until I say so. Azu turned to where heard the sound only to see an enormous black dragon with glowing crimson eyes. You've come here for my contract did you not? Well child, if you want it you must do one thing. And that one thing is, you must stay alive. Azu didn't know what to expect until one of the dragons went through his body. The room filled with dragons ripping through his body. He didn't know how long he could hold out but he would have to if he wanted to become the next wielder. Two days later, Azu was on his knees breathing hard. Soros knew the boy couldn't take no more but he did admire his courage. Why child, why do you wish to wield my power so much? Using what energy he had to look up, I want to change the world. I promised my parents that I would end war. Wars happen, as long as men have disputes there will be war child. You're one man, what do you hope to accomplish? Soros asked. I hope, no I will bring an end to all of the suffering. I don't want to see anyone lose their loved ones like I have. I will, I will, Azu collapsed. Soros smiled at the boy. Very well child. I will see how far this crusade of yours goes and where it will end up. I will lend you my power and all of my abilities. It's been a while since some worth came along to wield the contract. Seems like it's a new era. Xenos has informed me that he has taken on a 12-year-old boy. The younger generation seems to be smarter than its predecessor. Azu, you will be known as the wielder of the dragons. A black flame engulfed the young shinobi. When the flame died down, there was a tribal dragon tattoo on his left arm. It was now official, Azu was the wielder of the dragons. Two years later, a proud shinobi of the cloud Azu was. Now of 19 years of age, he was stronger, better than what he was once before. He had a 0% failure rate as far as missions went. The young Junin led a number of successful campaigns in earth, wind, and fire. Walking down the street, he could hear one of the younger shinobi whisper, that's Azu sama Papa told me he is one of the strongest in the village. Azu didn't really care about being the strongest in cloud, he wanted to be the strongest in the world. But he would have to contend with a number of people for that la. Kanoa's yellow flash, Hanzu, the Sanan, and his own sensei, not to mention the cages of each village. He wasn't arrogant and he knew what he could and could not do. Azu, what's going on bro? Yujin greeted his friend. Nothing much Yujin, are you ready? By the way where are Aoki, and Sodai? Shrugging, who knows, but they'd better hurry. I want to get this mission over with since it's our last mission for a while. This is going to be great when we get back you know some and R and R with the girls. Hannah should be back from her mission today right? Yeah, she should be back today. In any event, let's move out, Aoki and Sodai are waiting. Both Shinobi, who were walking to the village's exit, saw the two leaning against the wall. Ready, Azu? Sodai asked. Yes, let's go. The group headed out. Grass country four days later. The objective of the mission was simple, well at least Azu thought so. Gather intelligence on the rain and rock forces in this region and report to the wreckage on their findings. Azu suspected that it would be used for future attacks, that much he was certain of. What he didn't expect while heading home was witnessing another village getting burned to the ground before him. Looking from the mountain range from which he and the others stood, rain shinobi no doubt. Not again, I will not let it happen again. A trigger in Azu snapped when he saw the village being burned to the ground which caused him to take off toward the village. What the hell is his problem? Villagers get burned to the ground all of the time it's not our problem. Aoki shook her head, you know nothing of Azu, do you? She took off after her friend. Eugen placed his hand on Sodai's shoulder, Azu witnessed both his family and his village be burned to the ground by Rain Shinobi. Understand that he is doing this so no one will know the pain he carries inside of him every day. It may be a detour but I won't leave a comrade behind so I guess I'm going to help him avert this crisis as soon as possible. Eugen took off toward the village. Sodai really didn't like Azu at all. A shinobi shouldn't have any feelings. 
He isn't worthy of being a cloud shinobi. Even though he didn't like the group, he took off after them. A few minutes later, inside the village, Isu's goal was to help the survivors. He was saving people that were trapped in buildings and other establishments that were on fire. Sodai, Aoki, and Yujin were all by his side. Stumbling out of from an alleyway, Aizu saw a man with a kunai in his chest fall to the ground. Visage brought back memories of his father and the man that killed him. He's here, Aizu said to himself. He assumed correctly. Appearing on a roof above Aizu and his group were eleven rain nins. Aizu immediately recognized the one in the middle, the man who was apparently the lead of the group. It was the same man that killed his father. What do we have here? A bunch of cloud nins. You are a ways away from home you know. We're going to kill you all, I hope you know that. Senu Ryu, tonight is the night you atone for what you did 13 years ago. I will not show you, Niu Abai Dobu, Yokobari Hausui, Rakusa Mizuni, or Salamander Hanzo any mercy. I will kill you all. Aizu informed the man while glaring at him. One of the rain nins tapped the shoulder length, silver-haired, blue-eyed Junin, who the hell is this kid and why does he want you dead along with those he mentioned? Who knows? Maybe it's vengeance but for a brat to think he can win against the likes of me is absurd. Kill everyone except for him, he's mine. Motioning for his soldiers to attack, they took off after Sodai, Aoki, and Yujin. Aizu didn't hesitate with attacking Ryu. Both engaged in a kunai duel. Aizu's speed, agility, and cunning were too much for Ryu and after five minutes of dueling, he delivered a crucial attack with a deep cut to the stomach. Landing on a burning roof top, Aizu walked toward Ryu slowly, people like you make me sick. The day you and your band of hooligans took my family away I made a vow that I would kill you. Know this Ryu, you are going to die, that much is inevitable. Ryu started laughing, sure you can kill me but what about you friends? That girl is going to be killed and so are those two boys. You can make a choice, me or them. Isu's fist clenched as he watched his friends getting overwhelmed. This isn't over between us Ryu. Your fate has been decided. Pray we don't meet again. Aizu took off to aid his friends. The rain shinobi jumped out of the way and as Aizu was standing in a defensive position. Now that we've regrouped, want to try attacking us again. Ryu smiled as he stood, and the child is more foolish than he looks. You should have killed me kid, at least you friends would still be alive. What the hell are you talking about? When Ryu threw a kunai at the ground a few yards away from Aizu, it caused a number of ball to fly into the air. Aizu and the others didn't know what to expect, but when the bags exploded, numerous kunai and shuriken erupted from them. Oh no. No one in the village had time to counter, it was already done. The women, children, and men could not avoid being victims. Pierced in the back, neck, eyes, stomach were just some of the body parts that was hit causing many to fall to the deaths. Isu's speed and agility allowed him to avoid the weapons, but not injury. As good as he was, even he obtained injuries. Nothing deadly but significant nonetheless. Bastard. Hey guys, are you all right? Aizu's eyes expanded when he saw Yujin and Aoki riddled with kunai, senbon, and shuriken. Sodai, was hit as well. Ignoring his pain, he rushed to the two people he considered brother and sister. Aoki. Yujin. Sodai. Aoki looked up and smiled, sorry Aizu-chan, but I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think I will either. Aizu, I'm sorry we couldn't be any help to you. Yujin said. Come on guys you're going to make it, you can't die on me. I never wanted this to happen. Please guys don't leave me. You two are my family. Aizu stated as Tear were beginning to fill his eyes. Sorry, bro. I just can't hold on. Just make sure you kick his ass for me bro. One time four, Eugen eyes rolled in the back his head. He was dead. Eugen you can't die on me you bastard. Wake up, wake up. Tears ran down Aizu cheek. He felt a hand lightly wrap around his wrist. Don't worry about us Aizu kun. I will take care of him. Just make sure you fulfill your dream and end war. You have always been the stronger of us and I have no doubt that you will succeed in your quest. You can do, you can, you see a, Aoki's wrist went limp as it hit the ground. Aizu lost it and let out a loud scream. Turning to see if Sodai was alive, he tapped him, Sodai are you okay? Yay, somehow I'm okay Aizu. We have to take their bodies back or burn it. Seeing as how injured we are, I suggest that we. 
were taking them back. Azu anger was evident in his tone. Azu those shinobi might come back and if they do we won't survive. They will be able to retrieve our bodies and analyze them giving them the advantage over our village. We can't allow, Azu cut him off again. What part did you not understand that we are taking them back? I will carry them both if I have to but they are going home. Azu bent down to pick up his two friends. He looked up at Sodai when he saw him reach for Yujin. I will carry him, let's go. The two surviving shinobi headed home with the deceased comrades. Cloud village a month later. Azu was still grieving over the loss of his family. His two best friends were dead. When he and Sodai returned to the village they were taken to the hospital immediately. In between the month and his mourning, Sodai presented the report of the mission a few days after they came back, his actions brought him before the rakage and the council. The meeting was short and to the point. Azu was placed on probation for his actions. Even though they got the information they required, contact with the enemy just made the mission pointless. The enemy would now have time to prepare for whatever came their way. He was blamed for the continuation of the war. Walking down the street with the meeting playing in his head, he was kicking himself for his actions. Because of his actions, his friends were dead and he was the reason why the war was going on still. At least that's what the rakage made it seem like. He could feel the cold stares from his colleges and the village populace. Everyone wanted this war to end and the rakage made it seem like it was all his fault. The only person who didn't think so was Hannah. Azu looked up when Sodai landed in front of him. Azu, the rakage would like you to take on a mission in rice country. Looking for a way to redeem yourself, here is your chance. Azu grabbed the envelope that was given to him and opened it to read the contents. I can earn my honor back and help end this war. Thanks Sodai, you're a good friend. Of course I am, now get going. I will tell Hannah that you were called away. Azu ran off to meet up with the group he was to head out with. End of flashback. Redemption, looking in your eyes tells me you know what that's like Naruto. Azu said with a smile. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. In any event, what happened? You went from a peace-seeking guy to a war hawk, what got you to this point? Flashback. Four years later. Four years had passed since Azu left for that mission, which would keep him away from the village. During those four years, Azu met and trained with Kagai Dansei. Azu could feel that this man had evil intentions but he did agree with him on certain aspects of life, however, he knew that he would one day have to stop this man. Learning formidable sword styles allowed him to train with the Dragon's Fang for a year in this time frame. He figured get the training and move on, which he did. After his training he went after all the people on his list, the ones who murdered his family. Slowly by slowly, famous Rain Shinobi were turning up dead. His goal would slowly bring him to the one Shinobi that he hated above all, Salamander Hanzu. The battle was intense but Azu eventually showed who was the more skilled Shinobi of the two when he claimed Hanzu's head. It has been a long time since he was home and knew that probably a lot has changed since he was gone. It didn't matter, he would finally get a chance to work towards his other goal, since he had avenged his family. Walking to the gates with Hanzu's head in his hand, the guards stopped him at the village entrance. They however let him pass when they saw the headband. Azu, who was in a black hooded cloak headed toward the rakage tower. He requested an audience with the village leader, which was granted seeing as he did have Hanzu's head in his hand. Upon entering the office he was shocked to see Sodai sitting in the seat, so you're the rakage now, what happened to Sandime? Sodai recognized the voice, is that you Azu? Azu removed the hood then dropped Hanzu's head on the desk. I'm sorry that it took me so long to return but it did take me a while to heal. When I did I decided that in order to redeem myself I had to bring the head of Salamander Hanzu to the village, showing my loyalty, love for the village, and dedication to bring an end to war. I hope this will help. This does help greatly Azu. It's been a long time friend, welcome back. Sodai stood up and embraced his friend in a huge. Now, let's bring you before the council and have you reinstated. Two days later, Azu was walking down the street when he noticed someone he hadn't seen in a while. Misora Nichen, long time no see. Azu, is that really you? Wow look at you. I thought you were deceased. It's really good to see you. It's good to see you too, do you happen to know where Tosku Sensei is? I haven't seen him yet and well I was kind of looking for him. Misora, 
who was standing next to a little Kumoko cast her gaze downward, Kumoko, Kumoko-chan, I want you to go ahead and meet me at the store, I will catch up. The little girl nodded then ran off. She turned her gaze back to Reizu, he left us to pursue a dream. He said that it would benefit us all in the end but I don't know what he meant. He was talking crazy the night he left, something about the, dawn, was coming and it would shed light on this dark world. You didn't hear this from me but, source indicated that he is now a member of a group of rogue shinobi by the name of Akitsuki. I can't believe he left us. Well let me not talk your ear off, I have to go. Take care of yourself Azu. As Misora walked off, Azu couldn't believe what he was hearing. Tosku left Cloud, something didn't add up. He would worry about that later, he needed to see Hana. It didn't take him long to find her with a few people, whom he recognized as shinobi but he decided not to say anything. One of the male shinobi turned around and pointed at Azu, hey, why the hell is that loser looking at us? Hana turned to see who her friend was referring to. She immediately dropped the drink that was in her hand when her eyes landed on Azu. The two stared at one another without saying anything for minutes. Hour later, sitting on the roof of his apartment building, Azu explained to Hannah all that happened, so that's what I've been doing for that past four years. You've finally fulfilled the promise you made to your family after all. So what happens now? She asked. I don't know. The world is still not free from war, so that will continue to be one of my goals. The other is to make up the time that we were separated. Before you say anything just know I don't expect to pick up where we left off, that would be crazy. I want to take it slow and let it build so in time we can have what we had. Hannah stood up and walked to the edge of the roof, what makes you think that I wouldn't want to pick up where we left off? I told you once that I loved you Azu, and that didn't change in four years. I will admit that these four years have been the hardest four years of my life but in no way I would want to keep you out of my life any longer than is necessary. You do have a lot of making up to do Azu, and you can start by requesting a few months off from active duty. Standing up, meet me back here at 8. I will go talk to Sodai. Azu disappeared in black flames leaving behind and smiling Hannah, welcome home Azu. Five years passed. The years really flew by. In the between the five years that had passed, Azu and Hannah were now parents to a beautiful two-year-old they named Rado. He was the leader of a genin squad, which consisted of Kuin, Kumoko, and Kadan. He was gaining respect slowly. Azu was happy with his life. The five years wasn't without its woes. He did run into Akitsuki, Uchiha Itachi and Hogakushi Kissim, and did battle with the feared Uchiha. The group was after Kuin but the battle between Azu and Itachi never really did have a victor, as both fled. He would later find out that it was his sensei, who was the leader of the organization that had ordered him to back down. The Junin leader was asked by his former Junin sensei to join the organization but Kuin turned down the request. He wondered why Kumoko's father didn't attack him then, maybe it was because he was protecting his daughter or he still saw him as a son, but he knew that the time would come when he would have to face his sensei and the strong shinobis of that organization. Knowing that he would have to do battle with the Akitsuki in the future, he knew that he had to get stronger. Also in those five years, he was starting to look at Sodai in a different light. Two years ago he was sent on mission to kill a rogue samurai whom Sodai had informed him was planning a war. It wasn't until just recently he came from a mission to retrieve a missing nin, that he encountered the wielder of the Phoenix contract, the same guy who almost killed him nine years prior. He wondered why he came at him with such contempt and Senzairu revealed to him that he was responsible for the death of his master. Azu often wondered when he killed Senzairu's sensei if it was the right thing to do. He finally realized that it was a mistake and Sodai was to blame. His trust and faith in Sodai was lacking. Not only in Sodai was he losing faith, but the rest of the village council as well. After his encounter with Senzairu he studied up on the many of the legendary sword styles. Heavenly Sword was among the best, which he already knew. Wicked Wind, which he knew was derived from Heavenly Sword, was also something he knew. What he didn't know was the Divine Wrath, was another style derived from the Heavenly Sword. What was also shocking that the man he killed was in fact the only person in the world who was believed to know it. Why would you have me kill someone that studied and mastered a sword style that promotes peace, sod are you bastard. A year would pass as Azu started piecing more things together that added up over the years. Something was amiss and he would find out why. 
Also, he was wondering why people was fearing him instead of respecting him. Many of the villagers and the shinobi populace feared him for reasons he couldn't understand, that is until he heard a little girl whisper to her friend, Papa said that he is a danger to the village. He is the man that controls dragons, something no human has ever done. That's why he is the only one who can tame the demon Kuin. Azu shook his head, I am more feared than a Jinchuriki, how is that possible? My whole goal was to protect everyone and make life better. Trying to turn everyone against me I see, so it has come to this. Upon entering the Rakage Tower, he was informed that the Rakage was in a meeting with the council. Walking towards the meeting hall, Azu was confronted by two shinobi guards, who stood in his way. He asked them to move nicely but they didn't comply with his request. In doing so they were knocked unconscious without effort. Opening the doors to the council hall he stepped in glaring at Sodai, you, how could you? How could I what? Sodai said calmly. I thought we were friends but this whole time you have been trying to make me look like a bad guy. You purposely had me kill Tizen Gogoyu and for what reason? To protect the village, is that not what you want? Sodai countered. Protect the village. You did it knowing that he trained the wielder of the Phoenix contract. If I had to guess, you were hoping that we killed one another. It's not only that, why would you assign me to a team with Kuan on it? You're a strong shinobi and I thought under you tutelage that. Cut the shit Sodai, you did it cause you knew of Akatsuki. You knew they would target the boy and in doing so would take me out of the picture. None of you here particularly care for the boy so him dying is no issue to you. Hell my death isn't either. I'm starting to see things for what they really are. This village thrives on war. For someone like me, I am a threat because I want to end it. You talk about ending war and looking for a better way, but all of you sit here thinking of ways to constantly get the upper hand over other nations. If what happened five years ago with the Huga confirms it. A councilwoman spoke, Azu, you are out of line. Kuan and you are both valuable to the village. What is with this act of lunacy? Sodai did say you were exhibiting strange behavior lately. Azu cut his eyes at Sodai, of course he would say that, he really wants me dead. Now that I think about it, he has always wanted me dead. Azu I would leave now if I were you. Everything that was discussed here about you today is being confirmed by your actions. A member of the council stated. You, were talking about me. Why am I the topic of conversation? Shouldn't we be concerned with keeping the peace with other villages? For someone who brought us the head of Salamander Hanzu and his bandits to say that is hypocritical. Not only did you antics made Rain an enemy, but we also have issues with the leaf as well. An old male council member stated. Whose fault is that? You tried to kidnap the daughter of the Huga clan's leader. Did you not think the leaf would trust the cloud after being stabbed in the back when the treaty was signed? What happened to the hidden cloud? Sodai, I lost all faith in you. Azu turned to walk out of the office, but was stopped when Sodai's voice rang throughout the room, Azu, You're either with this village or you are against it. It would be unwise to go against Cloud Azu. don't do anything that you will regret later. Azu turned his head slightly, it's too late for that. Walking away from Sodai Azu knew that he would have to deal with him soon. His goal now was to take his family and flee, to where he didn't know. He just knew that as long as Sodai was leading Cloud, the village would be the bullet for wars. I will not be a part of this. I will take my family and flee. There are plenty shinobi who share my dream, I will seek him out. We will shape the world into a better place. I must get to Hana and Rado first. Azu arrived at his home. When he stepped in the house he was greeted by his wife and his three-year-old son. Kuin, who was staying with them, had Rado on his neck. Azu looked at Kuin, good, everyone's here. Hana, we're leaving this village tonight. Kuin, you're more than welcome to join me and my family but if not I understand. If you do stay apologize to Kumoko and Kadan, I'm sorry for going back on my promise of making sure they become Chunin. Sensei what's going on? Kuin asked. Yes, honey why are we leaving our home? This village and its leader are not trying to prevent war, they're promoting it so to speak. From the day I became a shinobi my goal was to fulfill the promise that I made on parents' grave to stop wars, but without fail I have been responsible for them as well. Azu, you haven't done anything. Hannah please, I know what I have done. But it will be different. It will be like we talked only difference I will be able to seek out people who share my views. 
The dream will be the same just somewhere else. Are you sure this is what you want to do Azu? You know I will be by your side. I'm sure. Let's pack our things and get out of here. Azu K his wife but both slowly pulled apart when the lights in their house went out. Azu turned to Kuan, both you and Rado find safety. What's going on? Hannah asked. They see me as threats so they've come to kill me. So, it's come to this sod eye. Stepping out of the shadows, the rakage held an evil grin, so it would seem. You have no idea how happy I am. The council agrees with me that you are a threat to the village. Old friend I gave you the option to either be with us or against us. Your blatant disrespect at the council room illustrated that you were not with us. Sodai Kun, what are you doing? We're all friends here are we not? Hannah asked shocked by what was going on. When Shinobi from the elite bolt surrounded them, she had her answer, Hannah do you know how much I wanted you? You're too good for him and have always been. I don't know what you see in this guy and his delusional goal for peace on earth. We are Shinobi, as long as we exist there will always be wars. Don't you get that Azu? To be honest, I never liked you Azu. I hated you from day one. You were Mr. Perfect, the shinobi that everyone wanted to be like and the one everyone adored. I remember Arjunan saying once that you would help this village prosper because of your talents. Always in your shadow always about you, you have no idea how happy I was when your two idiot teammates died. It gave me what I needed to turn the village against you. The four-year absence was more than enough to take over the village. Sandime wanted to hand over the reins to Tosku but Tosku wanted you to be the rakage. You were absent and they saw no one fit to leave but you, a man who was dead to all. When Tosku left the village I seized my chance and killed the old man, thus becoming Yondime rakage. Puppets, the village became puppets. Sodai, we're like family we. Wake up Hannah, he doesn't care for anyone but himself. He wants us dead. That's not true Azu. the fact of the matter is that I want you dead. I would never harm Hannah, but you and that kid of yours will be wiped from existence so we can start a family together Hannah and I. Sodai, you're mad. I'm sorry Sodai but I will not let you kill my son or the man I love. I will never love you. Hannah said as she slipped into a fighting stance. Sodai closed his eyes, so be it. I really do love you Hannah but if I can't have you no one will. As for you Azu, you will die here. Sodai appeared in front of Azu forcing back into a wall. Seeing a shinobi place a sword within inches of Hannah's neck caused him to move at a speed that he had never moved at. The bolt member was dead before he hit the ground. Azu dodged a few more attacks that caused him to move from Hannah's side. Hannah was defending herself pretty well against the bolt members, she wasn't one of the best in cloud for nothing. Doing back flips, Hannah pushed off of her hands and landed on one knee after she took a shinobi down. She turned to Azu as he took down a bolt member and smiled. Returning the smile, Azu's smile slowly turned into a look of sudden shock as a sword was placed through her back. Sodai, rip the sword from Hannah, I'm sorry Hannah-chan but I gave you a chance to walk away from this with your life. Azu was at a loss for words. All he saw was Hannah fall over on her face with her arm sprawled out. Three member of Bolt called themselves attacking but black flames erupted around him and burned him to a crisp. Moving at speeds that surpassed his own, Sodai eyes widened when he felt a sharp pain in his abdomen. Looking down, he saw Azu looking behind him with a blank expression, the only words that escaped Azu's mouth was, Die, you bastard. In an upward motion, Dragon's Fang, which was poking through Sodai's back, ripped him half. Azu turned to the look at the remaining shinobi, all of their bodies dropped as slashes appeared all over their body. Looking down, he saw blood spilling from Hannah's body. Kneeling down next to her body, her turned her over to see that she was still alive. Hannah Chan hang on I can get some help. I comma I. I'm not going to make it Azu. Don't say that. You are strong, I know this because it's one of the reasons I fell in love with you. I. Tears were falling down his eyes, I can't do this without you Hannah. Azu. You will do fine. Just make sure that, make sure that Rado grows up to be the, to be, to be, like you and he will be fine. Azu I know your dream will come true, I will. I will be watching to make sure. Hannah, please, I can get someone here. Azu yelled at the top of his lungs, someone please help me. Hannah touched his cheek, I never seen you scared ever, why now? Hannah, just hang on okay, just hang on, for me. 
Don't be scared, Azu. Everything will be okay. Even if I'm not here, I will always be with you. Your parents' dream, your dream, my dream, our dream, make it a reality. Don't give, don't give, G.I., you, you, you. Hannah went limp in his arms. Azu only cried once in his life, when his family was killed. He was now crying for the second time in his life and what over his wife's death. Looking straight ahead while holding Hannah's limp form, tears were streaming down his cheeks. Everyone he had ever cared about was dead. Azu closed his eyes. When he opened his eyes they were colder and much darker. The light that was in them were now gone. I will achieve my dream Hannah. I will not try to be peaceful in my approach. No I will do it by force. From this day forth, I will crush anyone who stands in my path. War. So be it. I will start a war that will make everyone fear another war. Today is a new day. No one will deter me from my goal. No one. The blue in his eyes morphed into a crimson red. The Azu that everyone knew was dead, the new Azu, the colder Azu, was now born. End of flashback. Naruto calmly asked, where did it all go wrong for you Azu? From what you're telling me, your goal was very noble. The way you are pursuing it now just isn't noble. What about the kids that lost family because of your actions? What about the misery you have caused because of your so-called crusade? Tell me Azu, what were you thinking when you decided that people could no longer think for themselves? Uzumaki Naruto, you have to understand that I've seen what war can do and what it has done. My whole life has practically been living in someone's war. I will not live in anyone's war, I will only live in mine's, since I know I can end it any time I feel like it. I fight to end it all, no more war no more pain. As shinobi we are taught to have no emotion, we are trained to be killers. Well, as shinobi we also help people but it seems that many have lost sight of what a shinobi is. Standing as the ruling power I will redefine what a shinobi is. The new generation will not look to war as answer, they will look for an alternative solution. You understand that war isn't an answer but yet you stand before me instead of beside me even after all I've told you. So be it. Jumping back about 30 yards, Aizu gripped his sword while Black Chakra began to dance around his body. Slipping into a stance with his sword slightly above his brows, Azu was preparing for his final move. He was preparing to use the Wicked Winds, Hell's Fury. The golden aura that encapsulated Naruto intensified. Azu, you have your goals and I have mine. I will not hold back. Your only chance is Heaven's Dance Uzumaki Naruto, Azu said as he continued to power up. To use Heaven's Dance would be to hold back. No. I will not use heaven's dance, I will finish this the way it should be finished. I will end it with, God's hand, the ultimate and final technique of heaven's blade. Like I said Azu, it ends here for you. We will see Uzumaki Naruto, we will see. The two warriors stood yards away from another. One surrounded by darkness while the other surrounded by light. Preparing for their final attacks, each had one thing in mind, that one thing was to win at all cost. To be concluded. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.